Welcome to another Goody Reader comparison video. My name is Marcus. And this is Peter. And today this is the video that everyone's been waiting for. This is the Amazon Kindle Fire versus the brand new Barnes & Noble Nook tablet. Uh, before we get into uh, how they look hardware-wise and, and diving into the software side of things, let's give some hardware uh, specs. They both have 7-inch screens. They both have the same resolution at 1024 by 600. The Kindle Fire actually has a Gorilla Glass display, which means that you can pretty well jab it with something very sharp and it won't break. Not the same with uh, the Nook tablet. They're both running Android 2.3. They both have a uh, 1 gigahertz dual core processor. Uh, the big difference is the RAM. The Kindle Fire only has 512, while the Nook tablet has 1 gig. Storage capacity is uh, a big difference too. Uh, the Kindle Fire has 8 gigs of internal storage with no expansion uh, for memory, while the Nook tablet has 16 gigs of internal storage, and you could further increase it up to 32 gigs via the micro SD. And incidentally, the micro SD is, uh, allows you to actually dual boot uh, your Nook. So you could uh, dual boot it into very soon an ice cream sandwich uh, interface. And um, this way you have like a, a full tablet experience. And then you take the SD out and you have the traditional Nook uh, booting sequence. Uh, that's more for advanced users, but stay tuned for further videos and we'll show you how to actually do all this. Uh, they both connect via uh, Wi-Fi. I would say that um, the Nook ta the Nook tablet actually looks to be a little bit heavier uh, by just a little bit, by probably like uh, less than an ounce. But it bears like to say it. Uh, from from you just holding both devices, uh, Peter, uh, how do they feel uh, form factor with each other? Yeah. Um... I actually like the feeling of the Kindle Fire a little bit better. It just feels like it's just packed in there, nice and tight. It's very firm. It's very, uh, it just feels like a really strong build quality. Not to say this isn't a good build quality, but just, I don't know, just something about it. Maybe it's the the rounded edges rather than the flat corn, the harsh corners. It just doesn't feel as strong as the um, the Kindle Fire, but I mean, it's not by much. It's not going to break the, it's not going to, you know, break a decision kind of thing. Yeah, it seems to me that almost like the Nook, uh, the Nook tablet is almost a little bit longer, hey? It's longer. It is wider, but it is thinner. So that's where the dimensions go. It's more spread out rather than gathered into the middle. So that's where the length and the width comes into play. All right. Why don't you show uh, the viewers at home uh, how these devices like stack up uh, against each other? Speakers, uh, what do these have? All right. Well, let's start with the Nook Color tablet on the left. You have a very nice looking exterior. Um, I actually like the uh, matte almost it's almost bronzy now I remember um, the older nook colors had a darker metal uh, darker metallic look but this one's almost a little bit brighter it, it's more bronzy gold now it has a, a physical button this one is a physical hardware driven button it is the nook button it uh, clicks it brings up the menu here uh, you have you have this little corner here which is really awesome uh, I just I really like that I just think it's a really nice design feature you have a power button on the left. This is used to lock the device, turn it on and off as well. You have volume up and volume down, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and you have a micro USB uh, slot for charging the device and transferring data. You also have SD card slot. Also, there are, I've noticed a speaker was down on the back of the Oh, unit. true. I'm sorry I forgot to mention that. There is a speaker on the back. Um, very inconvenient and I'm just gonna say really bad placement basically any way you hold this you hold it landscape you hold it portrait or you put it down that speakers covered 100% of the time uh, the only really way is if you just hold it from the sides to really let the speaker do what it's doing because if you put that speaker down on a hard surface the sound basically is muffled to a you know, in a comprehensible level. So. Yeah, and that's been one of my sort of um, 
it hasn't been my bane completely, but it, it's been one of the things that I really complain a lot about um, tablets in general, but looking at the Nook Color and the Nook Tablet, they both kind of have that problem where if you hold it in a landscape, if you hold it, hold it in portrait, the way that the speaker is, because it's at the bottom, your hands are often muffling it, and when you play music with it, it you can't really hear it, whereas with the Kindle Fire, where it has it, it doesn't have that problem. No, it doesn't. Let's look on the back where the speaker should be and it's not there where they put it was right at the top right where it should be out in the open stereo speakers unlike the nook tablets single speaker this one does have stereo speakers right on the top so you are able to get the full multimedia experience with that looking on the right you have absolutely nothing looking on the left you have absolutely nothing looking on the back once against nothing hmm. once again nothing sorry and on the bottom you have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack micro USB cable uh, slot for uh, storing uh, for transferring information and charging your device and a power button that is about it limiting the buttons makes the device look a lot more clean uh, makes it more compact, uh, not so many things hanging out, and uh, yeah, makes it pretty symmetrical and just slick looking. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of torn between a device with no buttons versus a device with buttons. A form factor without looking at anything else but just like the hardware, I almost like the fact that I can press this and call up the menu. Whereas uh, with this, it's not as intuitive. You, you know with this button, it'll always bring up the menu. You could be doing anything and just like, okay, I want to call up the web browser. Oh, I want to call up my, my app list. Oh, I want to check out further stuff in my library. Very easy to do. With this, it isn't sort of like there's no home button. You know, so what do you do, right? Whereas like a lot of e-readers have those types of buttons that allow you to uh, get right there. Barnes & Noble has always had their Nook buttons. It's always been uh, an identifying factor to their e-readers. But most of Kindles, there's never really, you know, they have the home button on their older models, but they didn't carry that over, as Marcus said, to the new tablet. There is actually absolutely almost no buttons that are hardware driven. Everywhere is everything is basically software driven on this tablet. Yeah, so if you're used to the Kindle keyboard or if you're used to previous models with the Kindle, it'll take the Kindle Fire takes a little bit of getting used to with just the absence of volume and everything. If you want to edit volume, you have to tap this little thing and edit things like that here. With this, it's like you just hit the volume keys. And I, I almost say that I like the, the physical buttons a little bit more. Um, it may make the device, like in the Barnes & Noble tablets case, a little bit like longer because of those things built into the chassis of the, of the device. And um, it increases the weight factor, of course, because you need this, those sort of things. But I almost like the physical buttons because sometimes screens become unresponsive or uh, when I'm laying in bed at night and the screen's off and I'm just listening to, say, a podcast or I'm listening to music. I actually have to turn the screen on my oh, eyes okay. yeah. yeah and my eyes are like ah you know mm. with 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 uh the physical volume keys I can just like turn it down or turn it up without having to do anything on the screen exactly no I totally agree um and as as Marcus said when you do have a power button and a volume buttons you do need an extra circuit board and chip to route it to the main CPU so yes there is a little bit more length uh weight all that kind of stuff Okay, let's take a look. Now that we kind of uh, talked about the hardware specs and uh, gave you a, a sense of what these two devices uh, look like, let, we're going to take a look at like the software experience. We're going to check out how complex PDFs look, how uh, magazines look, how pictures and video look, as well as the web browsing experience. Uh, these are all the, the things that you'll, you would use this, these devices for because uh, they both do a fair job at reading uh, books and color content, but we're going to dive into more or less the semantics. So uh, both of what you see here is the home screen. Um, the Kindle Fire has a kind of cool sort of fleed 3D flipping uh, this to it. It shows you all the, the current uh, things that you have open. So we were looking at pictures. We have, of course, the Goody Reader blog loaded up as well as uh, some uh, previous content. And uh, what's happening there with the Nook tablet? Yeah, you know, um, I do like the way that the Kindle has it kind of three-dimensional thing going on here. But this is really Android-esque where you can, you know, grab your app. Uh, I'm sorry. You can grab your app. You can, I'm not, I'm pressing it too long. You can grab your app. You can 
put it wherever you want. You have several pages, you know, you have the bar at the bottom. So you do have a little bit more customization with this, whereas this is like, you know, your previously viewed things here, a couple apps at the bottom. Uh, I like both of them. They're both, you know, unique in their own way. So yeah, it's pretty much the home screens. Okay. Let's uh, show how uh, the book experience looks. So uh, you have both here, the device says uh, stored both in the cloud and on the device. So uh, we have the same book here. Oh, okay. Let's uh, load that up. So it looks oh. like uh, the Nook uh, tablet loaded the book up a little faster. Just by a bit. Yeah. You notice that you may see on camera that this is flickering. That's because of just the, the megahertz on the screen versus uh, the camera that we're using. So it's not actually flickering to the naked eye, but it's, you know, when you film smartphones with a camera and some computers, you notice flickering uh, just because of the megahertz. So, um, there really isn't uh, anything to be concerned about. So th this is the same book, and we're going to just kind of how do page turn speeds go? So maybe on the count of three, let's just check it out. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So pretty well same. Well, yeah. yeah, nothing really too distinctive. Uh, what type of uh, like advanced options do uh, both these uh, bring to the table? Because a lot of people say, I want to look books up in a dictionary. I want to make highlights, annotations. Uh, do these export annotations? Can I change the font? You know, there's a lot of things that people like to do. Uh, what do these two bring to the table? Well, let's start by long pressing in the middle on both. And you see that you have highlightable uh, little icons here and you'll notice on the left here you have almost like a, a little preview of the word you're highlighting whereas on the right you have a little um, magnifying glass here I'll show you again here <laughs> I'm not sure why they did that because your finger kind of covers it so totally. it's still kind of cool I guess it's mostly to keep track of what you're highlighting so let's just do it one by one here so we don't get confused I almost uh, like the Nook color or the Nook tablet way of doing yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So I've just highlighted the word stone here. You can highlight it, note it down, look up, or find. So if you look it up and find, you can look it up on Wikipedia, dictionary.com, and so forth. Or you can get a famous phrase if you come across one and you want to highlight the whole thing. You can share it, look it up, and so forth. So pretty standard, um, uh, you know, hi highlighting and note taking with uh, an ebook. Same with the. Amazon Kindle that's not lacking at all either you can note highlight yeah it's almost like a real time dictionary that they Ex just had there exactly search in Google Wikipedia search in book uh you can as well extend the highlights and <laughs> you get your covered magnifying glass again and I really don't know why they did that yeah i find that's totally weird what happens yeah. when you click more let's click more you can okay. let's just do a uh, a single word there we go. And if you click more, you can look that up on Google, Wikipedia, or search for... Well, let's look it up in Wikipedia and see what happens. There you go. Pretty quick load. Yeah. And uh, what uh, I had searched obviously refers to this. So um, uh, pursing was the word I had looked up. So there you go. Uh, what about uh, the Nook tablet? Can you do the same thing with that? Look it up in Wikipedia and things like that? Let's go to uh, highlight it and let's click look up. Doesn't look like a, oh, yeah, yeah, right there. There's the wiki icon, I'm sorry. So let's click on the wiki icon. And there you go, you have um, just as fast as the load, except this was a, uh, the word was has a lot of disambiguations here. So I guess there's um, more to it than what I just typed in, but the same same concept yeah so it looks like pretty well um they both do the same things so you could like exactly. look up words with the built-in dictionary uh with uh, wikipedia google so they they both pretty well have like the same type of features and i think that's where the android backbone that both of these devices uh rely on that the web pages load up pretty quickly um now that we kind of looked on the way that you could edit the text, how can we change the text shown on the screen? All right, so a single tap in the middle of the device will bring up the bars at the bottom. You want to press the text button, and uh, you'll notice that they both have equal amount of text options, although I believe it's almost looking like the Amazon. Actually, you know what? They are pretty much similar in a lot of ways. They both have uh, a lot of different text sizes. You can see on this one as well. So they're all, they change live. You have line spacing on both. You can make it really tight on here. Oh, the publisher's default was on. So that was, uh, the publisher's default basically means that it's it's set up to a way that 
the publisher would intend you to read it at. So that's what we had it on there. So anyways, we can do line spacing, make it tight like that. Same with the Amazon. Or we can make them the other extremity, really far apart. We have margin settings on both. So let's go full margins. We have color mode. So on the Amazon Kindle, we have daytime, nighttime, and we have butter, it's called, which is kind of easy on the eyes. On the Barnes & Noble Nook Color, we have night mode. So you can tell here, day mode. That's just standard. We have gray, which is much easier on the eyes than um, uh, than daytime mode. We also have several others. I won't go too much. Yeah, it looks like we have like a lot more options. Uh, exactly, Sepia. Um, you do have uh, about eight fonts on the Barnes & Noble, whereas on the Kindle you do have a little bit more. So, uh, you know, they're pretty much dead even so far as we've been exploring these units. So Yeah, they both like seem like, especially when we went to like the font style menu here, those are almost the exact same settings. I would say that... Um, you know, the Kindle may have like a few extra uh, typefaces and uh, the Nook tablet has a few more uh, different types of themes. But as far as like the standard options that you want to change, like your line spacing, your margins, your font size, even the, the types of fonts that you want, it's pretty well like been a dead even so far. Even turning on publisher defaults, it, it both allows you to do that. Um, this allows you to change, has options right here for like your brightness and things where it doesn't really have that easily accessible here. But, you know, has options here to sync to farthest page and, you know, check out like the cover art and stuff like that. Um, the same thing with like the Nook tablet. They both have pretty well the same types of features. So uh, the ebook reading experience with the built in e reader is pretty well been like dead even so far. Um, you know, they both have the ability to, you know, sync to the page that you've read. So if I'm with my Kindle Fire and I stop reading uh, this book that I've been reading, Night Road by Kristen Hanna, and I'm out with my, you know, smartphone with my Amazon app, I could load that on there and just pick up where I left off. And the same thing with uh, the Barnes & Noble. So um, the ebook experience has been pretty well dead even. Uh, how do things uh, differ with like the store? Uh, if we're looking on, uh, say, buying content like uh, newspapers and magazines and so on. Uh, you can see the layout is uh, relatively different here from the Barnes and Noble and the Amazon. Um, immediately, it does look like you have a lot more categories because you do have this scrolling list on the Barnes and Noble store. Uh, whereas on the Amazon, it looks like you have to travel to see what you want. But you do have more thumbnails on the Amazon side than you do on the Barnes & Noble. Now, we are in a new stand, but you could visit the Kindle, say, the bookstore here. Um, this is the Nook store, so we'll probably just go to the Kindle store and just see how things are. But things are, are pretty well like the same, right? You have your children's books, top 100 paid things are sort of iconized rather than Listed. with your ear. Yeah, you can kind of fit more there because it's not like you're having to scroll all up and down a page. With here, it's sort of like it's one page, but you could scroll on all these like things here. Uh, let's check out how one of the big things that Amazon has been hyping is uh, a lot of the agreements they've been making with like children's books. Um, how Let's check out how kids' books differ on from device to device. Looks like you have just a big list of the available books and applications for kids on the Amazon. Whereas on the Barnes & Noble, you have a very specifically laid out categorized list. You see ages 0 to 2, 3 to 5, 6 to 8, 9 to 12, teens, and so forth. So instead of one big list containing all children's or kids' books, you have, oh, my kid is 3 years old. Let's click on the appropriate you know, let's see if these are appropriate for the children you're uh, appealing to. So I think that was uh, laid out a lot better than the Amazon was. For sure. I would like the Nook's uh, kids store is just so much more refined. And I would say the clear advantage is uh, the Nook tablet, uh, not only because of the way that it's laid out, but it actually has a ton of cool features uh, when you actually are looking at uh, kids books. Let's just take a look at a book here, uh, The Elephant Child. Kids' books seem to uh, like to load up in portrait mode here. 
read and record is a great feature and this is only found in the Nook tablet. Uh, Peter, why don't you uh, record a little something about uh, one elephant child? This is the elephant's child, how the elephant got his trunk. This is the elephant's child, how the elephant got his trunk. All right, then we have the speakers obviously like lowered and things like that, but this is perfect for parents that are traveling. You know, if you're the dad and you're going on conferences a lot, but you still want to read your child as they go to bed, or if you are a grandparent and you live in a totally different place, you can gift this book with the recording on it. And this is something that the Kindle Fire can't even touch. And this is really why. Um, I would say the Nook tablet is the clear-cut winner in terms of kids' books, both the way that they're laid out in a store, but both like in a, in a lot of the cool kind of features that it offers. I mean, um, I've said this before. I grew up reading Star Wars read-along records, and that's how I kind of really learned to read, like at like two, two and a half, where I just like read, listened to the records so much that I could just like quote it, and then eventually I associated the words with the read-along book with it and so this is sort of like the modern day equivalent where you can have a narrator read the book to you you can actually have the kid record themselves reading and develop reading skills or just straight up read the book by themselves if they're sort of at that age whereas um, the kindle store really doesn't um it's not really developed because they only let's face it with the advent of the kindle fire they're just slowly starting to develop as they go along nook has almost a two-year leg up so if kids books are your thing go with the nook tablet decisively Definitely, I would totally agree. Okay, let's uh, check out. Um, what else do we want to look at here? Uh, let's go check out a. Um, what do you call it? Uh, I can't even. Th a graphic novel. I'm sorry. I'm spacing out here. Let us go to the home menu, documents, and let's choose Asterix, which is a popular graphic novel. So you can see here that they're both very unreadable at this distance, but with a simple pinch and zoom and a quick uh, render, it will quickly um, turn into something that is no different than reading it off of a piece of paper. And uh, note that Asterix is a very, it's, it's an older, you know, uh, graphic novel comic. So the drawings might not be up to 2011 par, but mm. it is still good. So it's pretty well like the same, the way that yeah. they render it. I almost noticed when you first opened up um, this graphic novel, it had two options to open up the book. Do you know what that was about? Yeah, this is because uh, they give you two different programs. You could read it with Office Reader or Reader on the um, Barnes & Noble Nook. It's just much like when you open up a program on your PC and it says, would you like to open with uh, Microsoft Word or WordPad? So they just you have a little bit more options to do to deal with. Okay, cool. So it looks like, uh, you know, graphic novels look about the same from the device device but what about uh, complex PDFs I know a lot of our readers always email us and say you know how does the Globe and Mail how does uh, you know uh, the New York Times how do those look because I I love to read newspapers and it's very important to uh, our readers that newspapers look solid uh, how do uh, side loaded newspapers look well let's look at one we loaded in here it is a public domain free um, uh, world European newspaper. So let's go to the front page here. Should be a couple more pages back. There we go. So this is the newspaper. Uh, it's pretty much formatted to the device itself. We did not format them specifically. We just loaded it on and we let the device format it itself. Um, they're pretty much identical. Now these aren't really customizable Adobe program so you won't be able to do reflow or uh, reorganization or choose you know four grids four columns five rows it's basically these are both just PDF viewers they do a very good job of doing it but um, all you can really do is pinch and zoom you can't you can't make them into more columns or anything like that and that's really why a lot of uh, 
e-readers are the best for these sort of things. I, I know recently we reviewed the Pocketbook 912, which is um, an e-reader that hasn't even really even hit anywhere yet. We kind of got a pre-release a pre copy and reading our complex newspapers and PDFs, even though it is in e-ink, you have a lot more control over uh, different types of ways that you want to flow the newspaper. So by default, it's two columns, but with an e-ink e-reader, you can make it so it's one giant one. And it it's just you have more control over like your technical documents, your technical PDFs, uh, maybe like, uh, you know, anatomy and things like that. Of course, you don't get the color like you do on these. But I think um, e-ink, especially 9.7 inch ones, always look a little bit bigger than even 7 inches reading uh, PDFs display. It doesn't allow you a lot of uh, reflow options like Peter said, but pinching and zooming, it's pretty quick like on both of the devices. Like you're not really lagging a lot. Uh, there is a little bit of rendering when you're first uh, doing it pretty quickly, but it's fairly stable and robust. Uh, what do you want to show uh, the viewers next? Uh, we can go on to the web to see um, the web browsing experience as well as an embedded um, YouTube video. So, so you can uh, see it has tabbed browsing here on the Kindle Fire. So these are uh, a new web page as opposed to like an older web page here. Do you have tabs or anything like that on the Nook tablet? There you go. You can open up a new window. But um, I believe they're not really necessarily tabbed, so you will have to, I believe, go back. Oh, I've lost it. I saw more options there. What did that do? Let's go web. More options. So you can add bookmarks, find things on page, most right-click settings that you would find on a PC. So I would say that the web browser, just because of like the tabbed viewing here, is, is actually pretty cool. It does seem more it does seem a little bit more organized whereas I had to go into I think the third option down on a menu screen in order to find where I just was on the goodie reader uh -huh. page whereas this is right up above like you're just like on any web browser that you'd experience on your PC. Yeah, totally. All right, so let's just hit uh, the main page here, and we'll check out uh, aspects like uh, pinching and zooming, uh, playing embedded YouTube videos, and uh, scrolling up and down. So let's just scroll up and down and see like how the rendering is and how if there's any clipping. All right. They're pretty much identical. Yeah. They both um, they both have the odd stall here and there, but they're pretty much the same. Um, you don't really see any of that like artifacting or uh, checkerboarding at the back trying to catch up. It, and you really notice that on a lot of especially really low quality tablets. Yeah. Like we we've review countless of them where there's uh you know the checkerboard background even the original ipad was like that considering it was like a you know like a four or five hundred dollar device yeah exactly honestly you'll see that on a lot of um e-reader uh, e color e readers like the velocity micro cruise and the the Elocity A7 and the Pan Digital Novel, stuff like that. And uh, the worst uh, tablet of uh, 2010, which was the Ogden Gen Touch oh, 78. Oh my gosh, don't even start. All right, so let's uh, try pinching and zooming on a web page and see like how it how it does pretty quickly. <laughs> now, what I've noticed is um, why don't you double tap on some text? So, yeah, they both do that sort of reflow where um, reading blogs like ours is easier on mobile devices because you, unless you're doing that, you would have to like read it like that. And that gets really tedious where you can just like double tap it. I'm um, zoomed in and then, you know, you can just sort of like read the articles here. Pictures and stuff are a little bit out of sync, but at least like all the text flow is really good. And I, I find that's a total win. Um, you also have also some settings here. Let's just check out uh, the web browsing settings here. Um, cookies, JavaScript, text encoding. You can kind of see all the, oh, you could pretty well see for yourself. I'm not going to kind of go over the options, but there are quite a number of them here. Very oh. similar. All right. Let's uh, lastly check out how embedded YouTube videos look. Uh, I think simply we can uh, click on 
uh, the videos link at the top of our website. And I'll just uh, click on uh, this because we have a lot of videos on the front page. So sometimes it takes a little bit uh, longer to do up. Is it just me or did a Nook tablet load up this uh, a little bit faster? I, th I think you did press an extra an extra button there. Um, I think I, I just I think I just pressed it earlier. We will start the video at the same time though, just to save uh, anybody's um, you know running start or anything like that. So here All right. We go. Oh, looks like the Nook tablet to load up the video quicker. Yes, it did. Um, hands down, the uh, audio on the the Kindle Fire is just dominating, absolutely dominating. Uh, I wonder what's happening okay, here. If you opened up a new tab. You've clicked into YouTube. You clicked the YouTube uh, button there when you should have done the. This yeah, so they both play embedded YouTube clips at full screen. If you hit the full screen button. If you hit the full screen button, of course. Uh, Marcus had hit the YouTube button, which will then send you to YouTube, much like on any computer, tablet, PC, laptop. So, Oh, there we go. Nah, I was just going to ask about that. Yeah. I'll just give you some quick stats. Okay. Yeah, so they will, they will do the get the job done. Yeah. We'll just close that. So uh, pretty well the web browsing experience. Um, I would have to give it to the Kindle Fire just because I, I really dig the tabs. Yeah, it, yeah, definitely. That I mean, it, it's it's just more organized so far. So have we looked at the App Store yet? Not yet. So the final thing we're gonna look at is uh, like the App Store, and um, we'll just check out what it has here. So this is the default app list, and then you can click here and go to the App Store. So Amazon recently uh, revised their Android App Store and optimized it for a 7-inch Kindle Fire tablet. And you can see if you've visited it previously in the past on a mobile device, it actually is optimized for touch, looks very solid, it's, it's organized very effectively um, from new games, lifestyle, entertainment. I, I would almost say that I like their version more than even the official Google Android market. Yeah, um, I would say both of them are very well organized. You get a lot of scrolling. So you get these quick categories, top picks, top picks in games app, what's new. And then you can scroll left and right to discover more. So you're not really needing any more screen. So you don't have to travel all the way to the bottom to find something. Because even with Amazon, you just scroll this bar and oh, the other way. There you go. So you're really making the most out of the seven-inch screens you have. Uh, but in retrospect, I mean, look how far you have to kind of scroll up with this. Where mm -hmm. here, you're not really scrolling very much, and I think that that's really been a staple. <laughs> that's funny. Woo oh, uh, but that's almost been like the staple point of the Nook tablet experience. No matter if you're shopping for apps, shopping for books, that it all kind of has like these little uh, list view type of things, but also has like these icon uh, views too. Whereas with the Kindle Fire, it's much more scrolling up and down a whole lot. Yeah, um, I have found that on the Kindle when we were in the bookstore and the app store that you do have to kind of travel to find what you want. Now... Here's the deal uh, with the apps. We live in Canada. We have registered U.S. Uh, addresses and used our Canadian credit cards on both of these devices. The Amazon Kindle Fire will not let us even download free apps, um, but the Barnes & Noble Nook tablet does. We can buy magazines, newspapers, apps, everything with the Nook tablet. Uh, the Kindle Fire limits anybody out the, living out of the U.S. to uh, purchase any type of content or even like open it up. Uh, the only way to bypass that is to what use what's known as a VPN, which would physically change your uh, pro uh, computer IP address to a U.S.-based one because Amazon, uh, despite the fact that you may be using a 
a US based address on your Amazon account it actually tracks your IP whereas a VPN will change your physical IP to uh, one in a different country so we recommend just looking at free VPN services or using paid ones like hide my ass uh, both uh, all very good and it will allow you to uh, physically change the IP address on your PC so when you connect your Kindle Fire to your local Wi-Fi it'll allow you to uh, you know, uh, purchase and pretty well use Hulu Plus and all that type of stuff. I will be filming a dedicated video teaching you how to do that. So what I kind of told you was a general overview. Uh, but yeah, the end of the story is, Peter, which device do you think stands out a little bit more? The Amazon Kindle Fire or the Nook tablet? Truthfully, when I was reading the specs alone, I was worried that the Amazon Kindle Fire would not be able to keep up with the... Um, Nook Color tablet just to do just due to the almost half the RAM that this has. But honestly, in these tests, I didn't really see an instance where the RAM really shined. And I don't think that you need to really spend the extra fifty bucks to get any more usability out of this than you can get with this. I mean, all of our tests were or we kept saying, "Oh, this is dead even. This is dead even." Um, yeah, it's just the little things right now. How this doesn't work in Canada. Uh, it doesn't have a micro SD card slot, but it has great speakers and it looks good. And um, I couldn't, I couldn't really put a, a winner to any one. But if I had to lean towards one, it would be the Kindle Fire. It's cheaper. It does the same thing. It's very multimedia based. You can still read. Sure, it doesn't have as many kid applications as it should compared to the Barnes and Noble, but. Um, this has had years and years to refine itself. This is a second generation. This is right out of the gates, and it's already, I would say, keeping up. So I would have to give it to the Kindle Fire. I would have to give it to the Nook tablet uh, merely because the U.S. is... Um, it's large there's a lot of people there buying technologies but the worldwide population is huge and uh, I, from for writing for goody reader and doing a lot of the videos like we do uh, there's a, a strong international audience that that reads our blog I would say there's probably more people in Canada Europe New Zealand Australia that read our blog than uh, our US audience and so uh, with these devices a lot of them want these things and don't live in the U.S. I would say if you don't live in the U.S., the Kindle tab or the Barnes and Noble Nook tablet, uh, second generation Nook Color is probably your best investment because right out of the box you can watch Netflix, you can uh, watch streaming video, but their ecosystem for newspapers, magazines, and kids books has a two-year leg up on Amazon. And so if those types of uh, books really matter to you, uh, there's no contest. You want to go with the Nook uh, tablet because of its ecosystem is so much more refined if you're just looking at straight up just reading ebooks the Kindle bookstore it uh, probably has more books and uh, more big six publishers attached to it than the Barnes & Noble one does I kind of dig the 3d layout it's just the little things you know um, I would probably say if you live outside the US the Nook tablet, if you live in the US and you want a device that's more multimedia based get the Kindle Fire. So pretty well my summation is the Barnes & Noble Nook tablet is great for book reading on a tablet where the Kindle Fire is probably best suited for multimedia apps, games, and so on uh, than the Nook tablet. So we'll leave you guys to make uh, the ultimate decision for yourself. Uh, you can check out any of our other review videos on each of these devices as well as comparisons against other devices such as e-ink based e-readers, the Kobo Vox, Apple iPad, and a ton more. So check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash users slash goody reader uh, click like on this video if you like it and uh, be sure to check out our blog for all of the latest news previews interviews and a whole lot more at goodyreader.com slash blog and uh, for goody reader my name is marcus and this is peter and you've just watched a comparison video on the kindle fire and nook tablet